everyone and welcome again to another episode of the Pineapple Podcast. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button as we're growing our base. Today, we have an amazing guest today with us, Alfonso Kudra. And I just want to draw your attention. This man has been in the multifamily space for a long time. But apart from that, he's also a big person in our community with giving back. He's an author. He's an international speaker. He runs his own foundation, helping youth develop themselves from literally like, where do I go to building a financial future in their 20s? Uh, this man needs no introduction, but please welcome Alfonso Kudra. Thank you very much. Welcome, Alfonso. <laughs> okay. Pineapple, is it the Pineapple Podcast? The Pineapple Podcast. I need this to know. I need to know why did you name it the Pineapple Podcast? <laughs> Because that it's an interesting name. It's an interesting name. It's all about being tough on the outside and being sweet on the inside. I love and, it. No, and when no, we I, I love that. I love that. Good, good, good. Yeah, when we were playing with it, it was almost like, well, it it says nothing really. So therefore, it, it leaves us open to talk about different topics and different ventures and whatever we can do. But from a heritage perspective, and when you look at different cultures, it actually... Uh, works well for them because again it's it's a revered uh, uh, fruit you know but like I said I like the idea that you're tough on the outside and sweet on I the know. inside which is actually very much like yourself <laughs> well I think I'm silly on the inside <laughs> my 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 daughter which is 27 today um, she said wow. to me one time when she was like seven or eight she's like dad you're silly don't change <laughs> that is beautiful and well, so I never so changed. Much. I never changed. <laughs> well, this is a special day for us then. You're giving us such a beautiful time. So, you know, on behalf of all of us at the Pineapple Podcast, wishing you a lot of very happy, beautiful and wonderful birthday. No, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's really um, incredible, uh, this journey here. And to see, you know, people like you, you know, putting, you know, putting out so much content in real estate and pine, you know, doing a podcast and seeing so many people in their creative minds come together. When I started in real estate, uh, no, there was nowhere to get the information. There was nowhere where you can go and plug in and just listen to hours and hours and hours and hours of real estate content. Uh, when I started, it was kind of this mystical thing that only the really ultra wealthy did. Yes. And uh, I remember you know, I remember being being like 11 or 12 years old and I was walking with my friends and uh, we were walking by some buildings and yeah. I was like, someone owns these buildings, guys. Like someone has figured it out all of these. And I started doing the math. I'm like, yeah. I started counting how many units and I'm like, someone pays an individual or a family or a company all of this money. Someone figured it out. And then my friend said, nah. That's for that's for rich people. <laughs> wow. You know, and so you we yeah. separated ourselves. We put this like mystical, we put it like so far into the future. We we created this this ideology of like unattainable, right? This yes. thing is so unattainable. It's Very like true. You know, and, and and because there was no information, it was there was no one was talking about it. And so just to see you and your this platform that, that you've created, Mitch. Uh, it's just incredible. So I'm happy to be here, my friend. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, I, I won't let your uh, your audience down. I'm going to tell you something right now. So Please. what did you say? We have two hours? <laughs> <laughs> we have as much time as you okay. would love to have. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're not going to put a time clock on it. But uh, this is what I'll tell you. Um, in this podcast, your audience will get something of extreme value. I will bring tangibles that and, and actionable steps that they can take and apply to their life right away. And so, you know, you want to make sure that if you're listening to the Pineapple Podcast right now, make sure, first of all, make sure to subscribe right away. Make sure to to like and and um, hit the the notification because I know that you're gonna be you're gonna be bringing amazing guests because we had a talk. Uh, before we hit the record button and I know you're passionate about growing your community so sit down get your popcorn ready because uh, we're going to have a we're going to have a good time <laughs> beautiful wonderful looking forward to it let's yes. let's get rolling Alfonso so you you tell me 
you you tell me kind of how Good. you know you want to start this absolutely so you know alfonso the one thing is we always look at the leaders within the real estate space within the, the coaching the mindset space and we we accelerate and we grab all that information but i think a lot of people in this journey especially at this level they're still trying to figure out well exactly what do i do how do i do that and i know you had a story before you like you said 11 12 you figured out somebody owns it but then you pulled away because you know the conversation just wasn't there and you're right this level of information today was not available my wife and i we started 20 years ago and it was the same thing scrambling yeah. to just get knowledge you know um and then today is a different story but i just like to probably throw back a little bit about what shifted you into coming into the real estate space finding your yourself and now you know pushing yourself to become the best you or the best version of you well i'll go back um i'll go back to the beginning okay so immigrant uh, actually came here as a refugee from uh, el salvador war torn el salvador before the mm -hmm. age of 9 i was in two wars wow um i didn't go to school like uh like regular kids when you are in a in a country that's at war at civil war yes. uh, we had we were going through civil war um, you don't go to school like regular kids. And in fact, um, I had missed a lot of educational opportunities. By the time I uh, came to Canada, I came here as a refugee. I was nine years old and, and I had a really tough time integrating into the education system here. Right. Uh, first of all, the, you know, I was missing, there was some gaps in my learning, which which was fine. But also they never taught anything that I was interested in like you know I had a I have a very different uh learning style and and uh, I was always bored at school you know and this is why I'm so passionate about you know um inspiring younger people yeah. because I I was one of those young people that was just uninspired in school I just thought that you know what I, there's nothing there's nothing for me here right and <clears throat> for me uh, especially, you know, being an immigrant and, uh, you know, being a, a refugee, uh, single, single mom, my, my dad had left during the, during the war. The only people that I can connect with were people from my neighborhood. Right. And right. we were living in a very, uh, um, um, low, uh, economical, uh, area, you know, in, right. in, in right right in, right in well first of all in Vancouver and then later we moved to Ontario but uh, <clears throat> you know sometimes you know you connect with these young people and you're, you're on the streets and you're you're up to no good yeah I ended up being influenced by a lot of the negativity that was happening in 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 my life at the time ultimately dropping out of high school and leaving home wow. now I was 15 years old OK, mm -hmm. when I left when I left home. And so now I'm 15 years old, completely on my own. Um, at that time, you would look to your friends to support you. But, you know, they they, they don't have they're not <laughs> they don't have all their their life together, uh, you know, at, at that point either. And so for me, it was just like, at, at, you know, at my lowest point was living wow. on the streets. Wow. And so when I was 15, um, I slept on the streets. Uh, you know, I panhandled for change. I was on drugs and I was in a very, very dark place. But Mitch, we've all been there. I mean, your question was, how does someone get ahead? We've all been in a dark place and some yes. some may be worse than others, but it feels the same to everyone. Right. It, it It's you know, we've all hit that place where, you know, we've said to ourselves, like, why me? And, and Yeah. And just to build on that, too, because I realize that, too. A lot of people put that piece of their life, they hide it because to embrace that or revisit that is very difficult from a personal level. So the fact that well, you they haven't worked this, through it, right? They haven't worked right. through it. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's hidden. They, it doesn't allow them freedom to move ahead to the next phase. Yeah. So the, the, you're the sharing way, the, that is incredible. The way, the way I look at it is those were very formative years for me. Yep. And a lot of things that I learned on like living on the streets um there's a lot of things i learned about myself yes and 
at 15 years old, I had zero confidence in myself. I had zero confidence. I had zero self-worth. Um, I didn't think I was capable of anything. I hadn't like I was living way, 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 way beneath my 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 potential. You know, right. someone would, you know, if someone would have tapped me on the shoulder and say, Alfonso, one day you're going to be in a position to inspire thousands of people, change thousands of people's lives. I would say you're crazy. Right. right. And, and, and like for me, a, a very long time ago, I went from, you know, thinking about what I wanted in my life to shifting my mindset to how I was going to use my life in order to inspire others to live their their lives to the highest capacity. Yeah. And so my, sto my story, you know, because I am telling that story from a position of strength and a position of, uh, of um, being a survivor, not, yes. a, not a victim of, uh, of the circumstance, then that story can empower a lot of people because we've all been in a very dark place. We've all been in a situation where we said to ourselves, like, why me? And, we, yeah. and, we, and it's like, you can't understand why you're in that situation. That's and right. So for me, what happened, I had a life-changing moment. When I was 17, I became mm -hmm. a father for the very first time. Wow. Okay. And, oh, hold on. I have it right here. I'll, I'll, I'll show you this picture here. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> This is called Dude, a baby, a oh baby having God. a baby. A baby, that's right. <laughs> baby having a baby. You know, uh, this is, so this much is a, yes, so blessed. Her name is Talia. Talia, uh, beautiful lady. Uh, in September, she turns 27. Ah, right? okay. so that's 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 who I was talking about. Right. But uh, you know, change my life. Mm -hmm. You know, at that point, um, you know, before she was born. I didn't care about anything. I didn't have any responsibilities. Right. Uh, even though my life was in shambles, it didn't matter because it was. I didn't see the consequences of my actions. I had, you know, every everyone was at fault for my life, and right. you know, everyone would just change. Uh, I would be okay, right? Yep, yep, that's it. <laughs> everybody else but was we, bad, and it was everybody yes. else's fault. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and so, what what this little girl uh, did for me is that it got me to get out of myself and and now i have to think about another human being yes oh, mitch <laughs> we are not promoting for for people to have kids in order to <laughs> to find themselves or, or that's or, right or find purpose that's but, right but the truth is you should find a purpose you should yes. find a purpose something that is meaningful to you that you can attach to that is going to make you move forward in a like in a really fast way you know there 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 was a study by ink magazine that um they studied about you know hundreds and hundreds of successful people and they asked them a very simple question they said what are the traits that you can attribute to your success and you know people said multiple different things but the majority of them said the number one trait was determination. And the, yes. being determined means that you're willing to do what you have to do, when you have to do it, no questions asked, right? Yes. So being determined means like you are going for it. You cannot be stopped. Someone that is determined cannot be stopped. That determination comes from having a strong enough why, having a purpose, because if mm -hmm. your purpose is powerful enough, you are going to be determined and no one can stop you. No one. And so that first step, you know, that anybody, it doesn't matter what age you, you're, you know, you're 50, you're 60, you're 14, that, you're 15. Yep, that's right. The second you set up, you set a goal and you say, I want this. I want to have this lifestyle. I want to do this. The second question should be, why? Why is, why is attaining this goal important to me? Because if you can't determine the why, the, you will never be determined enough to keep moving forward no matter what. And as you know, Mitch, in, in real estate, there's a lot of people that are going to say no. They're going to, there are a lot of people in your way, a lot of mortgage brokers that are going to say you're never going to get a loan. 
everyone's against you. And so what's that one driving force? It has to be a strong enough why. Because yes. if your why is strong enough, yep. right? No yes. matter how hard it gets in business, you will you need to stop and remember why you started. And so for me, at that point, I changed my entire life. Right? I went back to school. Um, I got a job, but realized that, you know, $5 an hour, that's how much, that was the minimum wage back then. $5 an hour wasn't going to cut it. And so uh, I started a small business out of my locker in high school. I was yeah. selling mixtapes and I was selling, um, I was selling mixtapes and jeans and t-shirts that oh. I bought on Young Street. Okay. Yeah. And what yeah. I quickly realized is the power of profits. Yes. And so I bought a, a pair of jeans uh, on Young Street for $20 that I went back to sell in my high school in Ottawa for $60, making a $40 profit. <laughs> and so I knew at that time yes. that I was going to pursue profits for the rest of my life. And that's what I did. Yeah. I graduated at 19. I started a, a clothing store. Yeah. And um, that clothing store, by the time I was 21, I had locations all across Canada. I was ma manufacturing my own brands and products in, 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 in Asia, my own brands. And, and I was distributing those brands across Canada. And we're, I was, I was a multimillionaire at 21. Unbelievable. Now, I just, if I just stopped there, that the story would be sweet. Right? Yes, that, that, is that would true. be sweet. That, 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 that would be that would be that would that would be a sweet story. You, and, Unfortunately, and, and I, yeah, I want to frame that a little bit. So it means yeah, that, go ahead, that go age, ahead, go ahead. At that age, you've arrived. Like you know, in anybody else's mind, like that, that is a huge accomplishment. But what I love is that only gave you inspiration to go further, right? So, so you know, so I love I love yes. this story now. So I'm actually really excited to hear the next phase now. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I grew up I grew up uh poor all my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um we never my family never had money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um I always had to figure things out. And what drove like what drove me inside was just a need and want want to want things, right? Yes. And for I'll give you a, per a perfect example. When I was uh <clears throat> when I was tw uh, 12. I wanted MJ's, Michael Jordan's. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> the second, the second I told my mom the price, she said, "Forget about it. You're crazy, right?" <laughs> and so, right. because I wanted these MJ's so bad, my creative mind started to uh, actually take over, and I figured out ways how to get the money to buy MJ's. Now we're talking about you know 1990, 91, <laughs> and uh, you know. Two hundred dollars, hundred dollars, whatever it was, I can't remember. But that's a lot of money. But I figured it out, right? Absolutely. Now the problem, even though I was a very creative person, I had no financial education. My mom, I love her to death. Uh, taught me a lot of good things about being a man, respecting women, um, you know, integrity, all the good values that my mom taught me. But she couldn't teach me any financial literacy because she wasn't financially literate. Absolutely. She couldn't teach me about being an entrepreneur because she was not an entrepreneur. She That's couldn't right. teach me about running my own business. She couldn't teach me all of these things that I had to learn the hard way. And so at 21, making all of this money without having the financial uh, you know, background, uh, basically, I was very much a consumer because all I knew about successful people is that they had things. And so, wow. so I pursued things. I pursued yes. shiny things. Yes. And you can only imagine if I, if you were, if you can go back to be 21 years old and someone, you know, all of a sudden handed you all this kinds of money, what would you do with it? You would oh. probably spend it all, right? Because <laughs> That's it. You're, uh, it's you're a just checkbook not, now. Yeah. Not ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And the girls. So. So, so that was that, that was me at, at, at 21. You know, I would spend mm -hmm. it on cars, jewelry, right. dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was not financially literate. I didn't know about putting money away for a rainy day or or reserve having reserves available right. in case the business yeah, takes yeah. a downturn. Absolutely. And that's that's exactly what happened to me <laughs> after 9/11. Yeah. So 2001, 9/11. 
the the consumers' uh, habits changed. Right. Then got mixed in with uh, competition, the internet, China, all of these these uh, factors that I wasn't ready or prepared for. And then my my business started to take a a dive, and so now I'm 24, and I'm negative a million dollars, right? Oh my god! And yeah. so I'm on the verge of going bankrupt. I'm on I'm on the verge of losing everything, wow. right? So, right. You know, I had all these stores across Canada. Some stores, some employees were quitting. Some stores were closing, and right. I was in and it was in really rough shape. Yeah. And and my accountant even said you should go bankrupt. And I said, well, you know, like what am I going to do with my life, really? And so right. instead of going bankrupt, mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to fight. But I also wanted to educate myself. I said, I need to know about business. I'm obviously not a business person, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. You know, where I was in my life at 21 is the equivalent of an artist or yeah. a singer or um you know someone that plays for the nba that has a skill that can make produce a lot of money right but they're not financially savvy with their money they're not investors because right. i was very much a consumer and yeah. so i i picked up this this book rich dad poor dad yes yes and <laughs> and i started reading and i started to to realize why i was in that position and I said to myself, I will never be in this position again. I'm going to educate myself on being wealthy. You know, I'm going to educate myself on, on running uh, businesses. And I will never put my family in this position ever again. And so what I realized after, you know, that Rich Dad, Poor Dad, yeah. thinking, Mitch, those are some of my first books. Mitch, never wrote a, never read a book in my entire high school career. <laughs> <laughs> I was the kind of I was the kind of guy that would read the yeah. back and yes. get fifty one percent on the test, and that's good. Good, you know. But uh, you just got there, so that's good. Right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But um, you know, after those few books, I became addicted to reading and educating myself, Beautiful. and I realized I didn't have a problem with reading. I just didn't like reading things that I wasn't interested in. Right, right? and right. so you know, once I started reading I, biographies on wealthy people and you know, uh, uh, entrepreneurs. And I started to realize, wait a minute, I'm, I was so much, I was a, cons I was living a consumer and I had the consumer mindset. I needed wow. to shift to becoming an investor and having that investor mindset. I needed to invest my money. I needed to have my money work for me instead of work for my money. Yes. I needed to, I needed to, um, invest in real estate because the common thread among amongst all the wealthiest people in the world is that they invested in real estate. Number one, they needed to have multiple streams of income. I only had one. And I realized I how vulnerable I was. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go back and build my business, but I'm also going to, I'm going to uh, invest into real estate. I'm going to create a secondary stream of income that's indestructible, Armageddon proof. And so when I looked at all the different asset classes, I, I realized that all of these wealthy people, they no one talks about their triplex or their duplex. They're all talking about real commercial yes. properties. And right. so I started with the multifamily right away, right? Wow. And even was with repositioning. And mm -hmm. uh, I realized, you know, my one of my first deals was a duplex that I converted into a triplex yeah. roughly about 23 years ago. Right. And then, and then my second deal was a seven unit uh, apartment building then yeah. a 10 unit, and I started to scale up right away. There's yeah. a few things that I loved about the multifamily. Yeah. Was the economy of scale. Right. Yeah. made a lot of sense to me because I was a business owner. And imagine opening a business with only one customer. It just, it wouldn't work. It doesn't work. Number two is because um, because I had already my business, I needed to create a secondary stream of income where it wasn't as risky as my business. Right. And like the idea that mm -hmm. with multiple units, you can spread the risk. Yes. And, and then lastly, Mitch. Yeah. Because I was a business owner and because I was in financial trouble, my credit and, you know, I was self-employed really. And my credit had been bruised. So right. what I realized is with commercial mortgages, it was a lot easier, 
right to 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 get get financing because the financing is mostly about the asset itself in the right. in the the profitability of the asset. Yes, because you're so, buying a business. That's it. Yeah. And so by the time 2008 came, <laughs> yeah, I was like I had reduced my cost of living, and I just invested. I turned my oh. business around. And it was it was incredible. And I just went crazy. I was able to take advantage of all the opportunities at that time. So by the time I turned 30 years old, Mitch, yeah. I was financially free. Oh, hold and, on. So let, let's and- just bring that in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my viewers to miss this. This is what the entrepreneurial spirit truly is. Like you're, you're at your highs, you drop to your lows. But all it does is it just puts fire. It, it just fuels you up to, to find resolutions, find solutions. And look, you've actually demonstrated to us, a lot of us are trying to figure out what's the right strategy, what's the best way to go. This is the model. Do a bit of research into the different strategies yeah. and you'll find something that really aligns to you and your values, which is exactly what it did. You realize I'm doing the business with this, the retail now I'm just going to do business with, with multifamily because yeah. to your point, the banks really don't care about your credit. They don't care about your financials. They want to know that the business you're buying can run itself. Yeah. Now you have to run that business effectively, which is a different story. But so at 30 years, you've been able to really push yourself and to really redefine your, your business model so that now you're at a point where you could at this point at 30 say, hey, I'm good. I have it nice, you know. I can take care of my yeah. family, but I don't think that was and enough. I, I sold, and I sold the comp- I sold the uh, like the 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 clothing company. I so I was able to ah. sell it at that time. It was it was uh, in like a, a business that was at the brink of bankruptcy. I was right. able to rebuild it to a point where you know I got a nice check, you know, beautiful. And and then I realized that you know what I wanted to like. Uh, I was like I was financially free i didn't have to work a day in my life because i have my real estate right. investments coming in more than covers the the my life and so i said you know what this is it i'm gonna go on vacation <laughs> <laughs> so i went to the dominican republic you know yeah. and yes. uh, i took a, i took a two two week vacation and what i realized on the second the first day of the second week that i was miserable <laughs> I was like I was the <laughs> only guy moping around the beach, you know. Like, oh, what am I gonna do now? Right? That's um, right. Your your engine is churning, and you're not yeah. doing anything. It's like disconnected, right? Yeah, yeah. And I realized that I didn't want to do that, right? Because really? I was working so hard. Yeah. And the end goal was financial freedom, <laughs> right? And then I got it. And then I was like, okay, what am I gonna do with my life? And then when I, right. uh, and then I realized that. I wanted to live a life of fulfillment. Ah, yes. And this this, wanted, is, this is important. Like, yeah, that line alone is is worth so much. And I want people to really understand, fulfillment is very different from financial uh, freedom, right? And fulfillment Absolutely. really drives and inspires people. Well, I'm willing to bet that everyone has, a, and some people that are watching you already are financially free. Yes. And they're already pursuing their the life of fulfillment. Some people uh, have really great careers and they feel fulfilled, right? Like someone that has always wanted to be a surgeon and they're a surgeon and they yep. get to save lives. Yes. These and save lives. Uh, they're going to they're gonna feel fulfilled, right? Yes. So I don't want to get it. I don't want anybody to confuse this conversation by, by thinking that you have to leave your job to feel fulfilled. Right. Absolutely. Because if, have, because if you have a career and you're passionate about something, you are going to you're going to feel fulfilled. Yes. But I'm willing to bet that there's another part of the, the population that um, fantasizes about what that life would look like if they were financially free. And so That's it. I want to talk to those people specifically, because when I was, you know, in my 20s, I was working nine to nine and then nine oh one to like one in the morning. I was working on my real estate. <laughs> I was working all the time. Right. And, and um, 
you know, I had this fantasy that I would sit on the beach for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so when that day mm-hmm. came, mm-hmm. I realized that that's not what I wanted at all. Right. Yeah. I wanted to live a life of fulfillment. And what what hit me on that uh, on the uh, on the beach th- that day is that mm-hmm. I want to help as many people as possible get to that point yes. where they realize that whatever it is they thought they wanted, yeah. it's yes. not even it. <laughs> and actually now they're 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 forced to think about what they can contribute to society. Yeah. And so at that point I decided to become a freedom fighter, a financial freedom fighter and yeah. help people achieve financial freedom and because I achieved financial freedom through real estate, I decided that that's what I was going to do. I was going to spend the rest of my life mm-hmm. teaching people, helping people get to that point because i know that if i can get bring as many people to that financial freedom point it's possible right they're not going to sit on a beach for the rest of their life That's they're going to do amazing things with their churches with their communities with their 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 families that's what time is all about you know Absolutely. time is about doing something amazing with yes. that time and and in some may sit on the beach for the rest of their life, but that's okay too. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, you're right. That's okay. If that gives them the sense of satisfaction and fulfillment, then then so be it. Because, you know, helping people when you love it, it's like it energizes you. The more you talk, it's like 24 hours is not enough. I'm happy to help, happy to connect, happy to talk to people. Because yes, yes. when you give, I think you get back in energy too, right? At least I find you that get, for me. I, I yeah. get fueled. I get I get energy from people. Yes, right. I, I speak off it. <laughs> that that's right. That's right. And yeah. I, I share that because I'm in the same space when I when I coach or I help people and I see their success and you see their face light up and their their voice change. It's like yes. you know what? I was a part of that man. Like how cool is that, right? Yes. But if it's a fire, if it's a passion to give back, and and I also want to say thank you because. If you did not take that two-week vacation and realize that inside of you is the inspiration you're, you're going after, I think that, that makes the difference, you know? So yeah. that's, to me, that's huge. That's huge. So so now you've been in this space for quite some time as well, helping a lot of people. 15 years now. Wow, 15 years. Oh, my yeah, God. So, so this is why they call me the godfather of real estate, because I'm old. <laughs> You know, I was, uh, you know, I was, uh, I think I was on a podcast or something and people, uh, the person that was, that was doing the interview was like, oh, I know this person, he was your student. And I know this person, he's, he, his real estate started with you. And like all of these people's journey started with me. And then, and then uh, she said, you're like the godfather of real estate. And I, and I was <laughs> like, I don't know. And then, and then other people started saying it and, you know, I yeah. linked into it a little well, bit, you know what I mean? Because I thought it was a nice catchy name. <laughs> well, I, I think, I think I like it. I can, I can see why I've also had the uh, privilege of having uh, quite a few people here at the pineapple podcast that was, has also had their, their lives touched by yourself in terms of the vision where they can take their business to. And I got to tell you, I appreciate it. I got to tell you though, that in talking with them, that's why I love this, this conversation we're having today. Like they're not small minded anymore. They've really released their, 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 their inner being and they've released their, their thought process to really go beyond what people would normally think. Like you said, you know, back in the early days, your friend said, Hey, those are for rich people, you know? And even yeah. now, when you talk about multifamily, five units, six units, that's a big deal. But you realize that there's bigger opportunities if you can scale in the right way, educate, learn, surround yourself with the right people, and then let yourself explode, right? Yeah, so, it's, it, it's really about expansion. Yes. And if you, if, you, um, if you see my story uh, and you can you like you know if we had more time I'd tell you more more stories yes. about how I, I expanded and I had to get very uncomfortable mm-hmm. because we talk about fulfillment right yes so here's the key to fulfillment number one you have to take risks because if you don't take risks in life right. you can't and if you're not growing you're dying right yes. you cannot expand and contract at the same time 
right? It's either That's you're right. expanding or you're contracting. It's either you're growing or you're dying, just like a plant, right? right. And so you got to take risks. And those risks, those risks, you're, that expansion allows you to grow. And if you grow, when you have growth, this is when you have fulfillment. Yes. Life fulfillment comes from growing and expanding. Mm -hmm. And so that life fulfillment, and if you can't have life fulfillment, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, what are we doing, Mitch? That's right. What's yeah. the point? That, what what right. is the point? What is the point? And exactly. so it all comes from that expansion. When you allow yourself mm -hmm. to expand, most people tend to operate based on what they think is possible. They're yes. operating way beneath their potential. And so my mm -hmm. specialty in this is helping people just expand, allowing their mind to expand because we get anchored to certain numbers. I'm going to give you an example. Please. Uh, do you remember during COVID-19 uh, how cheap the gas was? Yes. What was the cheapest you ever saw it? Went down to below a dollar a liter. Like, like It was like how much? I think it was like 89 cents was the lowest I saw it around there. I thought it was in the 70s, but it was okay. Right. So everyone's going to get excited. And by the way, that's good news. You Cheap gas, but no one had anywhere to go. That's right. <laughs> I, I love that example. Yes. Yeah. But but then it went to a dollar. And then everybody's like, oh, a dollar. And then it went to 120, 130, 140. Uh, and it started climbing. And then someone said, Do you know that one day it can go, it might go up to two dollars? And everyone, everyone said, No way. And then that day came. As you know, Mitch, that day yes. came. That and day it came. continued to climb. Do you do you remember how what was the 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 height of that gas price? Oh my God! The height on that, I think I was paying something like two seventy six or two seventy eight. It was disgusting. <laughs> that was brutal. And then one day it it dropped back to one ninety or one ninety five, and everyone right. said, "So cheap." Yeah, that's right. right. It's because the mind, the human yeah. mind, becomes yes. anchored to numbers. So when we go out and invest into real estate, we 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 are we're operating based on what we think we can accomplish. And so we look at the deals that we think are we're capable of executing on. And by the way, what what what's our the what are what's our limit? There is no limit. And so the problem is that we limit ourselves. And so we get anchored to certain numbers like seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand, a million dollars, or whatever. That's right. our anchoring in our mind. Yes. When someone says 10 million, no, 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 no. Because our <laughs> mind have, have, it just has, it hasn't adjusted. That's right. right. So That's what right. I, what I do is I help people expand. It's like an elastic band. When you expand and you can, because you are going to contract it sometimes, yes. you know, you, you're going to expand and contract, but when you contract you, your elastic band is bigger than it was yes. when it started. Right. That's and so right. You, you expand that. and you contract. You expand right. and you contract. You expand and you contract. But guess what? You're here. Yeah. And so this expansion, it's <laughs> about giving yourself the permission mm -hmm. to look at. Just go and look at a $10 million deal. Go and look at a $100 million deal. Look at a $500 million deal. Because what's going to happen is your mind will expand to the point where you start to think and and, and imagine what this would look like and what would be the pieces that you need. And now go back and look at your million dollar deal and you're like, whoa. There's some differences here. <laughs> yeah, right? And, 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 and it's, yeah. it's like, it's like um, that Olympic, uh, you know, the you know they throw that big ball in the yes, Olympics. Yes, yeah, yeah. Do they practice with the same size ball or do they practice with a bigger ball? That's right. They got to use the right? bigger ball, yeah. That's it. So when they get to they get to the main event and they have the, the regular ball, it's like, oh, this is light, right? And <laughs> yes. so that's that's the idea of expansion, allowing yourself to level up, right? Awesome. And I always tell people, look, just as long as you are consistently growing, you don't have to be, you don't have to, you know, buy a, a thousand units in the next year. But if you're looking at a duplex, hey, why not look at a fourplex? If you're looking at a fourplex, hey. Why not look at an eight plex? 
if you're looking at an eight plex, hey, why not look at a twenty plex or a thirty plex? Right. Right. And so this yeah. is this is expansion. And once people start, they realize that they are capable. They do have what it takes to make that happen. And Absolutely. by the way, it's not yeah. that hard. It's actually easier than you know looking at the ones and twosies, right? And so yeah. that that's a big part of my philosophy. And, right. and how how I've trained people over the years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, lo I love that. I mean, and I, I really want to unpack that a little bit because you're right. If nothing else, by looking at the deals that you think is beyond you, you learn. You, you're learning in the best way. You're, you're dealing with yeah. it in reality. So now you're getting an understanding that nobody else can give you. Right. And Absolutely. so that, yeah, and that is going to just broaden your own horizon. It's going to give you the ability to say, you know what, it actually is doable. Right. You know, it's, it's a nice analogy you use, because I know there was one uh, story around the salesman as well, selling these uh, luxury Mercedes Benz. You know, it's like, you know, they weren't getting the sales, weren't getting the sales. And they came up with this concept. They're going to take the cars out to the offices in the, in the local area and let people test drive it. When you sit down in a luxury car and you test drive that, do you really want to go back to the old car that you have in the, in the driveway? Yeah. Your, your body and the experience just opens up. So Maybe. now flip this into real estate, right? This is what you're okay. giving us. And, and thank yeah. you so much well, for well, flipping well, it down. Well, look, at this. look at this, Mitch. Yes. The average person doesn't even think they have the right to go and test drive a Mercedes Benz. Absolutely. They won't give themselves the permission. That's right. Right. But when you actually go to the Mercedes Benz dealership, you realize it's the same price. It's just a little bit more than, you know, if you go to like a, you know, a starter, a starter level, uh, like a C class Mercedes. Yes. It's actually cheaper than you're buying, a, you know, like a Ford or whatever, you know, it's just the mindset. You know, it's just a mindset when you when people just don't give themselves the permission to even go into the dealership because they're like, oh, yeah. I have no business going there. <laughs> right. That's right. And, and so yeah. that that's kind of the part of the expansion, just allowing your your mind to expand. Yes. To what's possible, because what's possible, anything is possible. And if all of us could just tip, tap into just a little bit more of our potential it would be like a renaissance on earth absolutely will be i mean this is brilliant you know and i, I love the way your your analogy works that way because even on a personal experience like you know the mercedes benz i use the example but i also like that but the reason why is because for me it was a milestone because i also had that mindset where i felt that was the rich people that was outside of our realm and then because of real estate, you know, my wife and I basically said, let's let's just get this. We want it. Yeah. Real estate is doing magical things for us. And we made it happen, you know. And the fulfillment is, I look at it and it's a milestone. It's not a piece to say I'm showing off or whatever. It's just a milestone to know that I've measured myself against something that I thought was beyond my reach. It's now in my reach. And it's the same thing with the, with the multi, multi unit uh, apartments. If you open up to it, it becomes in your reach because you, you've sort of aroused your, your mind to it, right? And I think that's what you're doing. So thank you for sharing that because that just kind of explodes somebody's minds to realize really there are no limitations. And I think you've captured that in your 15 no, years, you know, you really, no <laughs> yeah, you really refined it to the point that. There really is no limits. You know, the limitations is what we put on ourselves. And also there's so much people around us now that are willing to share in communities like this, where you can learn, where you get information that before it was never there. And I, I must compliment you too, because there's a mindset that says, you're competing with me. I'm not going to share my secrets. In your case, you're saying, there's so much, there's plenty to in terms of how we think that there's more than enough for all of us to continue to grow. And how cool yeah. an environment that could be, or community that could be, where we're all helping each other rise and grow. Because 
let's face it, real estate is worth trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars globally. No there, one man can uh, buy. Right now on my YouTube channel, I have 967 videos for free, right? For yes. free content yes. that people can, can go. And not only that, there are thousands of people putting out content and the information is out there for everyone to 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 connect to resonate with and take action the problem is you know and and i'm only get, i can only speak from my experience okay because yes. I, I you know i come from latin america right and and um you know in latin america in in my mom you know her emphasis was you know, you have to get an education because that's the only wow. way you're ever going to do anything in your life uh, is to, you know, get a post-secondary degree. And, wow. uh, you know, that was that was a big that that's that was huge for her and what she understood back home. Yes. And so back home when people and, and, and it's not unusual because there's so much corruption, but when people have money, it's often looked like they did something or they they were crooked in some way or they stole something or they you know because yeah. that's that that's there's a lot of corruption back home right and so for for me coming here as an immigrant you know my mom was so against money like she mm -hmm. was more like you have to get an education but money's bad and yes. so the very first thing that people need to do is to take inventory on their relationship with money Absolutely. and to me if you see the very first money that i had i had to give it away it was almost like i was 21 and made money i had to give it away is because i had a very unhealthy relationship with money and finances right uh -huh. and right. a lot of households that's how you know people don't have that financial freedom education i didn't have any of that financial freedom education growing up and that's a big part of what drives me it's like you know i want to teach as many people as possible but i also want to go back and 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 get the young people involved in finances businesses real estate because a bit a huge impact that i can have on younger people because they are our future they yes. are our future our future leaders right That's and it. someone like me you know i grew up with no confidence zero confidence right no uh no self-worth um you know i didn't believe in myself mitch i had like i was operating mm -hmm. beneath like beneath the 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 what i was capable of right and and i remember when i was 17 because i had gotten into so much trouble when i was 15 and when i made that transition uh into changing my life i still had some demons that were chasing me you know, right. from my past life. Yes. Yes. And uh, I had a court case. Okay. And nothing, nothing uh, really crazy, but it would affect my life. You know, if I would have a charge, um, if I, if I would ever, you know, uh, yes. live and have a charge, my first business, my retail store, I had to go to the U.S. I would not even be able to cross the border if I had a charge under my name. That's right. So when I was in, when I lived in Vancouver and I was an immigrant, brand new immigrant, I met a man. And that man stayed in touch with me. And he was uh, he was like a big brother, but he wasn't part of an organization. It was just someone that kind of cared for me and, and saw that I was like a, you know, a young immigrant kid and with no father and right. no brothers or sisters. And he just wanted to you know, step, step in and play that role. He didn't right. do it for recognition or anything. He was just like a really good kinded person. And uh, when we moved to Ottawa and he always, he always stayed in touch. But when that, when I'm changing my life over and I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm a father at this time. I got this bit, I got my business. I'm going to school full time. Um, I'm trying to get my life together, but I had this one thing that was chasing me from when I was 15 years old. Right. So he came over to my house and he said, okay, do you have a suit? Ah, <laughs> And, and I said, no, I don't have a suit. Why would I need a suit? He said, well, you should show respect for the court. You know, if you're going right. to go to a court, you show you show respect for the judge. The judge is going to take you seriously. Right. But I realized that I was 17 years old, Mitch, 
and I had never worn a suit a day in my life ever. Right. I had never been in a position where I even own, I didn't own a suit. Right. And he said, "Let's go get you a suit." Wow. And so we went to the secondhand store. Yeah. And there was all these suits on the on the rack. I didn't even know my size, Mitch. I don't even know like forty two right. whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I grabbed some suits from the rack. Mm-hmm. I went into the change room, and um, <clears throat> I tried one of these suits on. Yes. I came out, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and for the very first time in my life, at seventeen, I saw potential. Wow. I saw all the things yes. that I could be. Beautiful. I saw how much I was devaluating my life. Mm-hmm. And I saw every, it was almost like a, a, a movie of, of a thousand scenes of yeah. everything that, 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 <laughs> that could happen in my life. Right. I was messing it up. Right. I, I also saw my mom and all mm-hmm. her, her struggles and, and sacrifices and mm-hmm. I was messing it up. You, she brought me to this country, and I was messing it up. And mm-hmm. I remember, you know, with that the suit, right? This used suit. Yeah. And yeah. For the very first time in my life, I saw potential. Mm-hmm. That's why I, you always see me with a blazer. Yeah. It's like my, I feel like it's my superpower. That's it's your signature. Cape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my cape. Love and, it. Love it. And, and uh, you know. The reason I share that story is yeah. because I want everyone to think about how are you operating? Are you operating? Have you have you fully tapped into your full potential? And I'm willing to bet everyone everyone watching this program right now has is operating way beneath what they're capable of. And so what 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 I've come here to share and I've come here to you know uh, invite people to do is to start getting extremely uncomfortable and start operating outside of that comfort zone and you'll see exactly what you're capable of absolutely that is huge because you're 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 hitting you know it's amazing the insights you're bringing to us because this is exactly where people are they can't seem to find themselves and so they they're discounting themselves and discounting their experiences in life and just focusing on well, I want something and I'm not getting it, so I'm not feeling alive, right? Yeah. Whereas you got to look back and say, look at the things I've accomplished. That's yeah. the fuel to say, okay, let me propel more. Let me get more. Let me be more yeah. uncomfortable, you know? Um, and, and you've demonstrated that beyond belief, you know, and congratulations to you. And it's, it's funny, though, but early in your life, even though you were going through your struggles, you had angels around you. And you, you, embraced, so. <laughs> you, embraced, their, their, you embraced their advice. You have embraced the knowledge. And I want people to realize that in today's world, there's so many angels around all of us with so many people stepping up and putting themselves out. To give of yourself to help people is not something that people take lightly when they get into the space. So they really genuinely want to help you and take it, run with it. Because you know what? If you can better yourselves, you're going to better the community around you. And that's how we're going to build a beautiful planet with, with beautiful people around you, you know? And that and that's the philosophy. The philosophy is help people achieve financial freedom, not because it, you know uh, every, it, it'd be fun if everyone had a lot of money. Is because you know when you check when you see your relationship with money, because a lot of people have this unhealthy relationship with money, thinking that it's bad. That's, but yeah. money will only make you more of who you are. That's right. And and why wouldn't you want more to yes. be able to create more, to become more, to give more, to inspire more, to do more? Because that's what we were we were put here on this planet to expand. We yes. were not meant to contract. When we contract and when we're in we're in this contraction phase, we don't feel good. We're not fulfilled. It's only when we ex- allow our, our, ourselves to expand that we can have more, give more, become more, do more, and help other people become more, do more, because you're, the, the, the life that you have is an inspiration to other people. So when you start doing, you start shining on other people, giving them permission to do it as well. And so that, that's been the philosophy of my life. 
you know, it's like, you know what? Uh, I want to do this, you know, because I want to, my life, it's, 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 it's an example to other people, right? Yes. And my daughters, I have two daughters. One, you met her. Her name is Talia, 27. She yes. she has now, uh, you know, built her own, you know, uh, portfolio, real estate portfolio. She has students. And then the next one coming up, her name is Alicia, 16. But I have to be the example to them. And so, you know, when I talked, I, I talked earlier, you know, I went from how, what I wanted in my life to how I was going to use my life. Yes. So all of the, all of the dark moments, Mitch, yeah. in my life, I'm using them to inspire other people to live their lives to the highest capacity. Absolutely. I mean, that, you know, that in itself is such a blessing for people listening to this. And I really want people to embrace this, right? Your story inspires people. And thank you for sharing that. It's, it, it means the world to me. Thank you. It means the world to the thank viewers you. here as well. And you know? we all have a story to tell. We all have a story to tell. <laughs> and one day we got to step up and tell that story, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, guys, you've heard it here, right here. Alfonso giving us so much nuggets of information, but more importantly, sharing his personal journey as to where he started to where he is today. And let's use that as inspiration. So again, folks, right here on the Pineapple Podcast, you know, we are very blessed to have Alfonso here. Alfonso, any last words? I also I'll quickly mention... I'm going to put Alfonso's contact information. If you want to get in touch with him, you'll reach him uh, through the comments down below. Just get uncomfortable. And remember, Alfonso loves you. And we're going to see you guys at the top. At the top. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great, great day. And remember, wishing you great successes in your journey as you go through your real estate journey. Take care. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment down below. Subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified the next time we're doing a, a, a video. And guess what? Like, share, dislike. I don't care! <laughs> Let me see how that looks.